stop by now where they fall But you have never failed me Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithful I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me again Never failed us Never will I know the night won't last
that's why we sing tonight for his faithfulness, for his goodness, who he is. That's why we're gathered here tonight. Let's raise up our song to God today. With me in the rising sun, with me when the day is done, the kindness of your heart, hey, the kindness of your heart. Let's do it like this. Never failing in the night, in your presence I will find the kindness of your heart. Come on. The kindness.
Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Night of Worship. We're so glad you're here. And like John said, we kind of shifted things around this week. We did something a little bit different. And I just wanted to tell you that um, when the team kind of presented this idea, when we started dreaming about what this could be like, one word kind of kept resurfacing. And that word is closer. We wanted to kind of bring everybody closer. But there's a reason for that. We didn't want to just change the room around just for the fun of it, although it's kind of fun, right? (laughs) But we thought that God always wants to be close to us. He is always close to us. And, And in a day and age where sometimes it feels like that the world is telling us that he's far away from us, we're gonna say it in this space tonight, we're gonna claim it over and over again, that he is near to us. He is near to us. Think about, yeah. Think about, think about what the Bible says. There is examples all through scripture of how God is near to us. In Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, he walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. He was right there with them, close to them. In the Psalms, it talks about how he is near to the brokenhearted. At the beginning of the New Testament, when Jesus comes, he is Emmanuel, God with us. He came in the form of a baby that has to be held. He is close to us. And in James, James 4, 8, it says, move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. And so that's what we're gonna do tonight. And you know, it doesn't really matter what configuration the room is in. You guys, anybody who's been to night of worship before, you know that you walk away, that you know you've experienced the presence of God in a fresh way, in a new way. But just the simple act of shifting the room, of shifting the way the room feels, it's our prayer that God would also shift our hearts closer to him, that he would shift the space, the atmosphere, so that we would sense his presence in fresh and new ways. It's not about just rearranging the room, but this night is about drawing closer to him, coming closer to him, moving our hearts, taking steps towards him, so that he might come closer to us. Let's pray together and then we're gonna just sing some more songs. God, we thank you. We thank you for a night to come and to sing to you. We thank you for a night that's set apart during a regular week. I know many of us just came from work today. We came off the 405 or the five and it was crazy. But God, right now in this space, I pray that you would just clear our hearts, clear our minds, that we might be able to draw close to you. And God, some of us need that. Some of us need it so much tonight. It's what we're here for. It's what we're, it's what we're begging for. We just need to feel close to you. But God, may it never, may it never leave our minds that you are always there. You are always near, no matter where we are. You are always within reach. And so God, tonight we're reaching for you. We love you, and it's in your name that we pray, amen.
to the God Almighty.
Amen. You can go ahead and take a quick seat where you're at or find a seat for a minute. You know, I'll never get over standing in the midst of you, in the midst of our church, and declaring those words. You know, this is the time I'm supposed to say something about the next song, but my heart is still on the last song. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, we've started the school year in our house. Summer's like officially over. And this week, we're, I think we're four days in to the new school year. And uh, we're in one of those weird families. We actually like summer. We like being together. We had a great family road trip, great summer vacation together. But now we're back in reality. We're back in the reality of the schedules and each year when our sons go back to school, we choose a verse, a passage of scripture that we just decide to be the prayer of our hearts and our family over our sons as they go into the school year. And we write that down in really sloppy handwriting and we stick it in their uh, three ring binder that they open at school. They put it in their wallet just to serve as a reminder that wherever they go, their God is with them. We might not be with them. They might have, be having the best day in the world. They might be having a rock bottom, worst day ever. But God has never moved on them. And this year, we chose a scripture that some of you might be really familiar with. It's from Zephaniah chapter 3, and it says this. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves. And he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but he will, this is my favorite part, but he will rejoice over you with singing. And when I think about my sons going off to school day after day, and I think about those words, praying those words over them that says, the Lord your God is with you. We might not be with you, but the Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves not the guy who's sitting on the bench, not the bystander sitting over there, but the mighty warrior who saves go with you. And you know, Steph shared that tonight we wanted to talk about being closer, closer to God and closer to each other. And I can't help but think about some of you who might feel the furthest thing away from close right now. God has never felt more distant to you. Your community seems to have let you down at every corner. And the, and the idea of being closer to God sounds like a myth. I say that because I know how that feels too. I've been there too. But I am holding on to the promise that the Lord our God is with me and the Lord our God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. And he, my friends, in this moment is rejoicing over you. He is rejoicing over me with singing. We sing to a God who sings back. Tonight, we sing to a God who sings back. And in just a moment, Timri's going to lead us in a song. It's a song that we heard a few months back that has made such an impact on our team. And I'm so sorry. I have no idea where I'm supposed to look right now. So I'm doing my best. I'm not the real teacher. He'll be up here in a minute. So don't worry about that. I'm going to come over to you guys now. Um, 
Hey! <laughs> we heard this song a few months ago, and it's a song that's called New Wine. A song that just says, Lord, make me a vessel. Turn me into something that you can use, and you can use me and pour yourself out through me. But the part of this song that really resonated deep within me is the very first lines that said, in the pressing and in the crushing, you are making new wine. In the soil that I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. And I just want to take a quick minute to talk to those of you in the house tonight that are in the, press, in the pressing and in the crushing. I am so sorry. I know what that feels like. You don't feel like yourself. You don't feel like you can get your footing anymore. The idea of singing great are you Lord and you are good, you are good is the hardest thing and you just, you just can't do it. So we sing for you. But it is my prayer and it is my deeply held belief and it is my faith that says in the seasons of the pressing, in the seasons of the crushing, I have to believe that God will make something beautiful. And he is still in the business of making new wine. That he is still in the business of taking new ground in Jesus' name. And so I don't know what the pressing or the crushing looks like for you. For me, it has been things like relational breakdown, things that once seemed so strong and secure somehow went away. Things that were once true of me somehow became out of whack and different. For some of us, it's a diagnosis that you never saw coming. None of that changes, Zephaniah 3. The Lord your God is with you. He takes great delight in you. And I believe he is taking and breaking new ground in our lives. So in just a little bit, we're going to spend a time of communion. And Pastor Buddy Owens is going to lead us in that. But before we do that, can we be reminded that no matter where you are, if you are on the mountaintop declaring the goodness of God, don't you ever be ashamed of that mountaintop. We need you and you sing for us, okay? But if you have lost your song, if you are in the pressing, if you are in the crushing, we will sing for you because we are confident that he will indeed make new wine out of you. And he will pour that out and you will be blessed to be a blessing. So as Timri sings, she's going to sing this over you at the beginning. She'll sing it over you, over the ones who can't sing it for yourself. But then she'll invite you to sing along too. And then we'll sing some more. We got a special treat coming up for you a little bit. We have some of your all-time favorite worship songs coming up. Songs that we've sung for decades around here at church. We call it the legacy medley. That just means they're really old, okay? <laughs> but we love them so much. And when the people gather around this space again tonight, if you just need a reminder that there are others on this journey with you, just come down here and let someone put their arm around you and sing shoulder to shoulder with someone and be reminded that God is not done with you, that he is still breaking new ground in your life and he will use you. He will turn you into a vessel to be used by him. Amen. And may he rejoice over you with singing. I love you, Saddleback.
Make me a vessel. Make me. 
It's a powerful song. You can be seated. As I was standing in the back of the room and listening to all of us worship the Lord and sing together and, and just asking, Lord, is there something you want to say? Because you know that the word teaches us so clearly that when we worship the Lord, he is present. And whenever God is present, he comes with gifts of grace. He always brings gifts when he shows up. He's a good visitor. He brings gifts of grace, gifts of mercy, gifts of healing. And word pictures were coming to my mind as we were singing and I was, the, the first thought that popped into my head was that in this song of surrender that we just sang, the thought that came to my mind was that there is nothing more magnificent than a man or woman whose heart is fully surrendered to the purposes of God it's a decision that only you can make. But there is nothing more magnificent than a man or woman whose heart is fully surrendered to the purposes of God because they are then fulfilling the reason that he made them. That they are then able to be used for his kingdom purposes. To shape and to change the world for their king. To influence the world around them for the magnificent purposes of God. There is nothing more magnificent than a man or a woman whose heart is fully surrendered. Sometimes that surrender, as we just sang, as John was talking about, sometimes that surrender requires a cost. And yes, there is a crushing at times. There is a pressing that we're under. I have friends in this room right now, dear friends, who are in a, a season of pressing but out of that pressing comes a new wine. The reason for a new wine is to quench the thirst of people in a new season. God does not give you new wine for old reasons. If he's going to give new wine into your life, it's because there's something new that he wants to do through you. But the process of that happening, the process of that happening sometimes is painful. Because whenever God wants to bring you into something new, he first has to bring you out of something old. And sometimes he has to bring you out kicking and screaming. It's a little painful to get there. But the other picture that came to my mind was actually something I shared at a night of worship years ago and didn't know I was going to share it that night either. I didn't know I was going to share it tonight. Man, it'll only take me a minute, so don't worry about your clock. But there are three pictures one is what I call the seminary of the mind. The seminary of the mind is that part of us where we figure God out. We get him into his little boxes. We get all of the answers figured out. It's where we do all of our theological theologizing stuff. <laughs> where we think we know what we think we know. That's the, that's the seminary of the mind. But there's also a place called, that I call the sanctuary of the heart. The sanctuary of the heart is where you offer up your worship to God, your heartfelt worship. But somewhere between the seminary in the mind and the sanctuary of the heart is what I call the vineyard of the soul. And it's in the vineyard of the soul that life happens. It's in the vineyard of the soul that your offering of worship is grown and developed. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 15, that praise is the fruit of our lips. It's not the work of our hands. It's the fruit of lips. The fruit is the natural outgrowth of your character. That fruit has to be grown someplace. And it's grown in the vineyard of the soul. That's where the tilling up of the soil happens. That's where the stones are removed. The weeds are pulled out. That's where the pruning happens. That's where the fertilizing happens. Anybody here ever been fertilized? We all know what fertilizer's made of, right? So you know what I'm talking about. 
I want to make a t-shirt that says fertilizer happens. <laughs> it happens in the, in the vineyard of the soul. It's the seasons, the times that we go through that we don't understand where things are broken, where things are mended, where things are repurposed. And out of that time, that's where the fruit grows. And then in the crushing of that fruit that we just sang about, that's where the new wine comes. And God gives new wine when he wants to lead us into a new season. If you're in that season, I wanna give you hope that you're not in a season like that to stay. That God is not crushing you for the sake of crushing you. He's making something. Out of your experience will come the fruit of lips that confess his name. Out of your experience will come new expressions of worship and praise. Ways to give thanks to God. Ways to, to build upon your testimony of the goodness of God in your life if you will allow him to do his work in you. There is nothing more magnificent than the heart of a man or woman that is fully surrendered to the purposes of God. If you think you're in the vineyard of the soul, if you're in one of those times in your life, don't resist it. Let God do the work that he wants to do. He knows better than we do what needs to happen. He will reinvent you. He will reinvent your purpose. He will make old things new. And out of that struggle and turmoil and fertilizing will come new wine. One of the ways that we worship God together is when we come to the table of the Lord. The table of the Lord, in a very real sense, was a new wine. Jesus took a shadow and showed us the substance he took an old purpose for wine and gave it a whole new meaning. The Bible says that on the night he was betrayed, that he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this and remember me. And in the same way, it says, he took the cup and he said, this cup, this wine, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. The Bible says for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus was giving us a new way to see, to see who he is, to see what he has done for us, to see the plan of God for our lives. It's the beauty of the table. And yet so often when we come to the, to the table, we come in sorrow, just like we come through our vineyard times, our crushing time. We come in sorrow because we forget that there's more to the story. When Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me, when the Bible says that we proclaim his death until he comes, well, what does it mean to proclaim his death? Remember, I've told you this so many times. This cup is not a memorial to a dead man. It is a toast to a risen king. We remember. We remember his death until he comes. We remember what his death did. We remember what it bought for us. And we remember that Jesus is not dead that he rose from the grave. When we come to the cup, when we come to the table, we remember all that he did for us. Don't come in sorrow, come in joy, come in gratitude. The Bible says, yes, we must search our hearts. It is our sin that put him on the cross. But if you think that you can search your heart and somehow pray to the point where now you are, are, are uh, good enough, worthy enough, you've confessed enough that now you can finally come to the table. Now you're missing the whole point. To really, truly search your heart, the only conclusion you can reach is how desperately you need a savior. Then you're ready to come to the table because you know that you have a savior, that Jesus died for you, that he paid the price for your forgiveness 
He rose from the dead to give us new life. He reconciled us to the Father. And now we have a whole new meaning to bread and a whole new meaning to this new wine. We're gonna come to the table together tonight. We're going to sing songs of worship again in a moment. And around this room, there are two stations on that side of the room. There are two in each of these entrances and there are two more on that side. And in a moment, when the worship team begins to lead us in worship, you can get up whenever you want to and go to any of those stations. And there will be people there, someone with bread and someone with the cup, and they'll remind you, the body of Christ was broken for you. The blood of Jesus was poured out for your sins. Now, a little word of instruction. When you take the piece of bread and they're holding the cup, please, don't try to drink out of the cup. <laughs> Instead, you dip the bread in the cup and then you can eat. We'll have prayer teams at each of the tables. We also have prayer teams out on the patio if you want to spend a little more time with somebody out in the prayer garden. But I want to encourage you, come to the table of the Lord as part of your worship. It's something Jesus commanded us to do. He said, do this as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. One of the other ways that Jesus gave us to show our worship is baptism. And we're baptizing tonight in this service. So when you come to the table, when you come to the table and you receive communion, if you would like to be baptized, in fact, let me talk to you about that for a minute. I think you know by now that we baptize a lot of people in this church. Have you been baptized? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Baptism is not just something we do. Baptism is a confession of our faith. Baptism is a life statement. In coming to the water of baptism, you're not saying, yeah, I finally got baptized. What you are saying is, I am a baptized follower of Christ. Baptism is a sign of a covenant that God has made with you. And coming to the water of baptism is a way of saying, I am living as a covenant person. That all of my life is lived under the sign of that covenant. It's a command of Jesus. And it's an invitation that he issues to all of us. Come. The Bible says we are buried with him in baptism and raised to walk in a whole new life. And that's what it symbolizes. So if you have not been baptized yet, what are you waiting for? We have everything you need for baptism tonight. So when you come to the table for communion and you receive the bread and the cup, step on out to the patio. There's a pastor out there waiting and we will be happy to baptize you tonight. His name is Rick Warren. His name is Rick Warren. Where are you, Ricky? <laughs> come and show the world, come and show the church that you are a part of the body of Christ. Join Rick. If he'll baptize you, what else are you waiting for? Let's come and get baptized tonight. But I want to pray over these elements, and then we'll continue to worship. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for the process that you are leading us through in newness of life. And in that newness of life, yes, there is new wine. And though there is pain in the process, we know that there is hope in the outcome. There is a purpose for the outcome. And so, Lord, as we come to your table, we confess, as your word says, that your body was broken so that we could be made whole and your blood was poured out so that our sins could be forgiven. And so, Lord, we come to the table in obedience to you, in honor to you, our dearest friend, the captain of our salvation. And we say thank you. When there was no hope, you gave yourself to us so that all of life now can be filled with the hope of eternal life with you in heaven. And we thank you for that. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So come to the table as you're ready. Worship team, would you please continue to lead us?
So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I am to worship song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart yeah. so I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about it is. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you.
sets free is free indeed. I'm no longer a slave to fear. No. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround.
upon me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living We sing.
chains falling. Yes, come on now. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Come on, saddle back. I hear the chains falling. Thank you, Lord. tonight I don't know about you but I'm so glad that we got to be closer tonight closer to each other because somewhere in this opportunity God feels that much closer as well so we're going to keep singing as long as they're baptisms which could be a while you just have to be out by midnight um <laughs> Other than that, guys, we love you so much. We can't wait to see you again on the weekend. We get to sing every weekend to a God who sings back to us. He rejoices over us with singing.
Saddleback, we love you. We'll keep singing, but have a great night. We'll see you on the weekend. Don't forget to be here. Bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring your kids, bring everyone, because we serve a God who sings. Love you, Saddleback. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing, but now. Failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. Come on, let's celebrate. Here we go. Come on. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glory.
us end the night with celebration just how we started recognizing the goodness of God, His faithfulness to us. He goes everywhere we go. So as we exit these doors tonight, His goodness and His mercy follow us. Let's sing it out. With me in the rising sun, with me when the day is done, the kindness of your heart. the goodness and the mercy of God. We love you, Saddleback. We'll see you on the weekend.